Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just Two Acres Farm. Quite often I'll be making a video and talking in front of this or that and people will ask, well, what's that thing behind you? What's that tractor in the weeds? I got them all over the place here. Most of them are parts tractors. So I thought I'd take a video and tell you the story of these tractors because just as much as the piece of equipment itself, it's the story of it that interests me, the history. First of all, this tractor, because it shows up a lot. It's a 1937 Farmall F20 and this may have been one of my easiest but longest acquisitions. I already had an F20. I'll show you the restored one in a few minutes. But this one was just down the road. And when I was in my old job, I would drive past it twice a day. It never moved. It was always in the same spot. I had weeds growing up around it like this. And I probably did that for 10 years, back and forth. Well, one day I stopped and asked the lady who lived in the house. I said, hey, is that tractor for sale? And she said, well, I'll have to ask my son. And she called me back a couple days later and said, she said, yeah, it's for sale, 500 bucks. I said, well, I think I'll take that. That was probably 15 years ago and it's sat right here ever since, right where we pulled it to. Dad and I went down the road to get it. He was driving the Super C and towed me back on it. As you can see, it's got some mobility issues. Very bad. This tractor, of course, like all tractors of this era, pretty much, they were dual fuel tractors. So gasoline was expensive. You would start the tractor on gasoline, warm it up on gasoline. When it got hot enough, it could burn what we in America call distillate, or some people interchange with the word kerosene, although they're two separate things. Folks overseas might call that TVO or tractor vaporizing oil. This tractor was made to run on that much cheaper fuel. The big tank is for the distillate and the little tank that's pocketed inside the big tank is for gasoline starting. But this tractor will run just fine on gasoline alone. That's what I run my other F20 on. And we can figure out that the previous owner of this tractor quit using distillate in it quite a ways before it was abandoned because they taped the starting tank lid shut just to make sure nobody put any fuel in there. You put the gasoline right in here. F20s are really common around here, kind of a dime a dozen. Uh, $500 is, you know, probably close to scrap price for them now. But there were some things about this one that I liked. First of all, it's really complete. Here's one feature you don't see every day. This is a heat exchanging manifold. Both intake and exhaust are combined in here, and it crosses exhaust air with intake air to pre-warm the intake air when this tractor is running on distillate or tractor fuel. It's really hard to find one of these manifolds that isn't cracked, and this one is cracked. Not as bad as I've seen some of them. And this lever that's on it right here was connected to a rod that ran straight back into this holder, and this rod controlled how much you were pre-warming the air, so it regulated how much exhaust air was passing by the intake air, so you could sort of adjust the temperature of it. That heat exchanging manifold worked in conjunction with these, which are radiator shutters in the front of the tractor, another method for keeping the engine running hot when it was running on distillate. These shutters connect to this linkage that runs back to a crank here to open and close the shutters. Although there are a lot of F20s still around, these radiator shutters are quite a bit more rare because when people converted them to just running on gasoline after gasoline became uh, cheaper compared to distillate, they just took them off and threw them in the barn someplace. The other thing that affects them is that they tend to rot out on the bottom because debris collects down here. These are in pretty good shape. This tractor has hand brakes, one on each side that you pull with your hand rather than a foot pedal. Foot pedal brakes weren't very common back then and these brakes were connected to a linkage that ran up along here, a cable along and through this guide and around this pulley here and connected into the steering mechanism back here. So when you turn the tractor sharply, that lever on the steering mechanism on the front bolster would pull that cable tight and actuate the brake on that side. You've seen it, I've done it in old videos with my other F20. You can spin it literally on a dime because it holds this wheel still while the tractor spins around. Some other interesting things about this tractor, underneath these berry bushes are cut off steel wheels. And what that means is this tractor originally came with a steel wheel on it, no rubber. And later on it got retrofitted with this rim here. They just cut the steel wheel off, left the spokes and the hub on and welded this rim on it so that they could put a rubber tire on it. Same with the little front tires. These were originally steel wheels and they welded them on right here to a rim for a rubber tire. 
And I can imagine the day that that happened, the farmer who did it was awfully happy with the ride of his tractor versus the old lugged steel wheels. Here's a farmer fix. This tire has no tread left on it. That tire's got quite a bit. I imagine over the years they were salvaged from other tractors as this tractor was relegated to secondary duty. But to make up for the lack of tread here, they put a set of chains on it. Cheaper than buying a new tire. And of course, on this side of the tractor, we have good old magneto ignition. One thing that's usually missing on these that this one had, that's why I call it fairly complete, is this little sleeve here, which covers the coupling to the magneto to keep dirt and dust from getting in there. And then this leather boot here, which covers the governor linkage. It's, it squeezes and stretches based on how the linkage is doing. Usually these things are gone, rotted away. And these levers, there's one on each side. Well, this is the old Armstrong implement lift system. <laughs> All the horse-drawn equipment we had around when I was a kid had these on it. You just set it where you want it, and there you go. This was used to raise and lower implements, especially things like cultivators, which this tractor was used a lot for. There are other little details that show you the history of the tractor. This is for engaging the belt pulley and the PTO. Well, this lever is supposed to come up here like this, but obviously somebody got tired of whacking it with their foot when they were reaching for the clutch, so they just chopped it off. An interesting little tidbit, before 1934, I think, I forget the exact year, farm alls were painted gray, like every other tractor back then, and then they switched to red. This being a 37, it was red originally. Let's see if we can find some bright red. Not there. Grease always keeps paint in decent condition. Of course, the tractor's probably been repainted more than once in its life anyway, but yeah, red under there. One of the things I enjoy when I buy a tractor is there's always lots of cool stuff in the toolbox. Of course, there's always a few old wrenches, bolts. You got to have a lot of bolts on hand, you know. There's an old ball peen hammerhead. Obviously, the handle broke off and you chucked it in there. What else we got in here? Part of a screwdriver. They should have taken that back for the lifetime warranty. I have yet to find a $100 bill in one of those toolboxes, but I'll keep looking. I have no plans to restore this tractor. I mean, not today, not tomorrow, not five years from now, not in the foreseeable future. These things are kind of a bear to restore if you're going to take them all apart, because I've done that before, and sort of go through them completely. It's not in the cards. The engine in that old F20 has been set up, stuck, frozen since probably long before I bought it. Now, aside from a complete restoration, you can do a will it run thing and replace what's necessary and try to get it running as is, but that's never really been a hobby of mine, the kind of will it run thing, because when an engine sat that long, you really want to take it apart and assess what damage is before you cause more damage by making it run. This is the F20 that I restored, 1939. I did it 18 years ago, I did the math, it was a big job. It was the first tractor that I ever did. She's kind of dusty now. I haven't had her out this year yet, but if you look back through the video library, I have videos of this tractor working as well as a video that's just dedicated to all the features of the F20. <laughs> all right, on to the next tractor. These tractors out here in the weeds where I keep all my hanging implements were parts tractors. Underneath all these wild grapevines is a Farm All H. I can't even remember what year it was. After 1939, there were very few changes in the model run. I bought this at the Whitney Point auction. Oh boy, it must have been around 2010 because I was restoring the other H that you see in the videos all the time, but that H had a bad reverse gear. It was missing a tooth. And the differential housing on the tractor I was restoring was busted. Somebody tried to glue it back together with JB Weld. That didn't work very well, so I had to take the differential housing out of this and put it in the other tractor. This tractor cost me $700 at auction, which was a bit pricey for me at the time, considering I only needed a few parts out of it, but I figured I would need more, and it turned out as I was doing the other H, I did need a few more off the engine. It ran. We drove it onto the trailer after the auction, brought it home, but it had a bad skip in it. I pulled the valve cover off, it had a bent push rod. That was all that was wrong with it. But I needed it for parts, and of course I needed it right now, and so that's what I paid. Now for this heap of spare parts. Will you guys stop complaining? I'm trying to make a video here. You got plenty to eat. 
<laughs> Don't give me that story. This here was, <laughs> when it was whole, uh, Farmall 656 diesel hydro. And I bought it kind of like, well, it had an engine in it. I bought it for the engine. It had a good running diesel engine in it. And uh, I bought this at auction down in Newark Valley. I paid $1,100 for it, which I didn't want to go that high, but dad said, <laughs> he kind of pushed me that high, and I'm glad he did. The engine that came out of it has run ever since, and I haven't done a whole lot to it. So the story behind it is, I bought the 656 that I run all the time in the videos, and it was a gas tractor. And the first winter I had it, I rebuilt the engine. Pulled the engine out, did a complete rebuild on it, and all the machine shop work with a good machine shop. And I put it back in the tractor. The engine ran fantastic. And then I decided I was unhappy with having a gas engine in the tractor. Those 263s, that's the engine that's in an inline six, were known for using a lot of gasoline. And when I was doing hay with it, it was burning through a lot of gasoline. So I don't know. I don't know if it was a rational choice or not, but I really wanted a diesel in it, so I bought this, pulled the diesel engine out of this, and put it in that, and still have that 263 that I took out of the original 656 sitting up in the barn here waiting for a use. I suspect the history on this tractor is that the hydro went in it, and hydros are like these magic boxes to a lot of farmers, so they just parked it even though the engine ran, and that's how some of the parts got stripped off of it before I ran into it, and then why it got sold at auction, such as it is with no wheels. Here's the last tractor, and it is really in the weeds. I pulled it back here to forget about it. Let's see if we can get back toward the engine end here. At least it gave a woodchuck a home. This tractor represents my foray into trying some other brand. For a while I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to do a case. And that's what this is. It's a case SC tractor. I bought this from a neighbor. I think it was 500 bucks. And it was complete. And I tore it apart. And then I realized, and I should have looked a little closer before I bought it, that somebody had modified it to be a pulling tractor. So it didn't have the original sleeves or the original pistons in it. The crankshaft was, I don't know what. And I just ran into a parts nightmare. That and it being a brand that I turned out I wasn't all that passionate about, I gave up on it and pulled it back here and there it sits. This is a black walnut tree. Black walnut trees don't grow very fast, but this has grown from seed since I parked the tractor. Boy, those cows are awful today. So it's been here, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. What, now I get up and look at you and you guys are all quiet. You only yell at me when I'm not looking at you. <sighs> there are a couple things about this tractor though that I always thought were really cool. Number one, there's the steering mechanism. I forget what it was called, a pigeon roost, bird's roost, something like that. It's outside the tractor when it's all together and connects that arm up there. And then the steering box is here at the base of the steering wheel. The other thing is that the transmissions on these old cases were oriented at 90 degrees to what most other brands were using for transmission. So normally the transmission shafts are going this way in line with the tractor. These are all cross shafts and you can pull each shaft out with these covers. The thinking behind that, as I understand it, was that puts the bevel gear up here right off of the clutch. And so that way you've got a fast spinning, which is a low torque, high RPM situation, making that transition to the cross in the transmission shafts. And you won't have a bevel gear back here to drive the final drive. So back here, when you have a bevel gear, you have a high torque, low RPM situation. In case felt there was less power loss by keeping the direction all the same. So the transmission gears drive the bull gears directly. There's no bevel gear in between them. I certainly could have garbled that. I'm not a case expert, but that's what I remember from when I was studying them all those years ago when I tore into that tractor. So that's it. Those are all the tractors I have hiding here and there. Or wait, was there another? Well, there might be a few more, but those are all the ones I can remember anyway. I always get these questions. Well, what's the next tractor you're going to restore? And my answer right now is none. <laughs> I, uh, I get burned out on that stuff. It is so much work. I'd rather run the ones I have than tear them all apart. I try to keep the ones that I use daily running well, and 
that's the plan going forward. Maintenance, not restoration. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.